My latest project is Derp Star, a 2D arcade style game with mechanics from pinball and asteroids. I'm currently refactoring from kinematic to rigid bodies, so it's a good time to document. I've implemented player movement, a scrolling background, and the pause menu. This lets you resume, restart, or quit the game. I have applied to the Steam Partner program, but the process takes a while. The Derp Star is a rigid body, so its movement is controlled by the physics engine. I've turned the gravity scale down to zero since we're in space. The collision shape is a circle for best bouncing potential. I do not want the thrusters colliding with objects, so I used a sprite node facing to the right. The flame is hidden by default. On ready, I call deactivate, which hides the flame and stops the process from running. Activate is called externally to show the flame and restart the process. This calculates a normalized vector from the thruster's global rotation. Then apply the impulse to the parent node from its relative position scaled by delta and a factor. Each thruster instance can be moved and rotated into place. I have two arrays mapping the hotkeys to each thruster. These are bound in the project settings to Q, W, E, R, and T. In process, I loop through the hotkeys to activate the corresponding thruster when pressed and deactivate on release. I found a great tutorial for making nebulas in GIMP, which I modified for this project. If the background image is smaller than the window size, it will cause rendering issues like this. So I make the image 2000 pixels wide. Fill the background with black and add a noise filter. And change the settings to this. Add a sparkle filter to make them brighter. Set the parameters like this to generate some stars. Then make it tileable with the Tile Seamless filter. Make a black background layer behind it and add a new layer mask over the stars. Render solid noise, set the size to around 10, and select tileable. Then turn up the brightness so more stars can show through. For the second image, I start again with a black background and add some noise. And configure it like this. Then adjust the brightness and contrast. This will greatly reduce the number of stars. Now we can add the sparkle filter. These settings will make the stars bigger and brighter than the first image. Add the tile seamless filter as well. Add an alpha channel to the layer. Use color to alpha and select black to make the background transparent. To make the space clouds, I start out by rendering plasma. Randomize the seed until it looks good. Then add a layer mask to the plasma. Then render solid noise, enable turbulent, turn up the detail, and increase the size. Draw a random shape with the lasso tool, select invert, and delete the area. 
Then use Gaussian Blur to make it look more like a cloud. Hide the background and export to image. I made a couple more nebulas to give it some variety. I added a parallax background node in the main scene with three child parallax layers. The motion scale is lowest on the first layer and highest on the last to give a telescopic effect. I set the mirroring to 2000 by 2000 for both star layers and disable centered on the sprite. The last layer has multiple sprites, so the mirroring is set to 4000. I manually change the position of each cloud to fill the area. I downloaded a couple free fonts from FontSpace, and added a canvas layer for the overlay menu. On the main node, set the pause mode to stop, and all child nodes should inherit. Then change pause mode on the overlay to process so you can unpause. The pause menu background is a texture rect with a gradient fill. Change the alpha channel in the color selector to make it semi-transparent. Anchor the corners at 0, 0, 1, and 1, and set the rect size to the game window dimension. Under this is a VBox container anchored in the center. The pivot offset is half the container size. Change the position so the plus sign lines up in the crosshairs. Now the menu will stay centered if you resize the window. Then I added a label and three buttons to make the menu. Enable dynamic font and add the custom font data file. You can also change the font size and colors. You can connect a signal to the buttons using the editor. Connect to the pressed signal and select the overlay script. It will generate an empty function. Use gettree.quit to close the window. Resume runs the unpause function and restart unpauses before reloading the tree. The pause function sets the pause flag to true, pauses the tree, and shows the menu. The unpause function does the opposite. Process checks if the pause button has been pressed, which I set to the escape key. The if statement lets you toggle between states. And we'll want to hide the pause menu by default. I would like to make the derp star spin from the thrusters, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. I will be adding some enemies and a point system in the next update. I put a link to the GitHub project in the description if you want to check it out. Thank you for watching, and have a great day!